Good afternoon and hello everyone. My name is Rich Longo and I'll be your host for today's presentation. Thank you for joining us for another Flycast Partners webinar. Today's webinar presentation is the powerful and intuitive software for IT service management presented by Flycast Partners own Kyle Hamilton. Kyle is a software engineer for Flycast Partners with well over 25 years experience in the IT service management space. His career started as a network engineer for Perot Systems and was quickly hired by Network Associates as a professional services consultant where he delivered ITSM solutions around the world for thousands of customers. Kyle's primary focus is on ITIL processes and architecture. He has extensive knowledge of CMDB and asset management projects and also deals with automation and management solutions such as BMC client management and BMC discovery. Kyle has been a certified consultant for Front Range, Peregrine Software, BMC Remedy Force, Service Desk Express, BMC Discovery, BMC Client Manager, and Sharewell as being ITIL certified and Microsoft MCSE and many others, so he's quite the background. So before we get started, Kyle, let me introduce our organization here. Flycast Partners is here to deliver a seriously amazing IT experience. We were founded and staffed by personnel that have many years of experience in the IT space. We took the best ideas from these collective experiences and added the best components necessary to grow and become a leading value-added reseller in in the North American IT market. We offer best-in-class implementation services and training in ITSM, ITAM, workload automation spaces using ITIL best practices. Our professional services can easily scale up or down in order to meet the IT needs of any customer regardless of size, complexity, or budgetary restrictions. We offer implementation services both on-site and remote, as well as training to reinforce your company's long-term IT success. Our ongoing administration and support service offerings will enable your organization to focus on your normal day-to-day -day operations, saving you both time and money. Please visit our website at www.flycastpartners.com or feel free to call us at any time at 844-FLYCAST. As you can see, this is just one of many weekly webinars that we offer here at Flycast Partners, and I encourage you to attend or invite your friends at work to attend some topics that may interest you. We encourage you to utilize our website for researching your industry white papers, training that is available from ITIL to IT tools, process improvement and management, assistance with professional services, and also utilize our ITSM solution finder. We will be taking questions at the end of today's presentation. Please type your questions in the Q&A section that is provided in this WebEx, and I will read them off to Kyle, and he will answer them in the order in which they were received. So without further ado, once again, I would like to introduce Kyle Hamilton. Kyle, the show is yours. Just share your screen, and we're ready. Thank you very much, Rich. I appreciate it. Um, and again, welcome to everybody. I appreciate you, you know, taking time out of your afternoon to uh, participate um, and listen in. Um, what I hope to do today is provide you with a good understanding, a good overview of the ShareWell solution, what it can provide you um, in terms of benefits to your organization, value that you can glean from it. Um, as Rich mentioned, I'm going to keep them as as I know there's a large group, but as, as interactive as possible. So if you have questions, please feel free to drop them on the chat, um, open them up, you know, ask them as we go, and we'll try and knock those questions out as we go through the process. Um, I'm not a big PowerPoint um, person, um, as you'll quickly find out. So we're not going to spend any time looking at PowerPoint slides. Um, we're going to talk about the tool and look at the tool rather than uh, spending any time in slideware or deckware. So I'm going to immediately go in and we're going to start talking about what Sherwell can do for you in your environment. Now, um, 
in in many cases, all right, what uh, customers are looking for, and I'm gonna just log in real quickly as admin. If I type the right ID, what you're looking for is call avoidance, right? But a way to you know deflect calls from the service desk, um, offload workload to other you know departments, other groups, so that um, you're having to deal with less and less at the front lines, um, and having to escalate less and less. Um, one of the unique features of Sherwell that I like that's different from a lot of the other software solutions that are out there is its ability to generate meaningful, useful statistics. Like there's a lot of tools that I, I, I work with a lot of them. As Rich has mentioned, I've worked with Remedy all the way to Surface Desk Express to Sherwell to Footprints across the board. Um, What's hard oftentimes is the ability to get meaningful, useful data out of your service desk. You're logging all these calls, you're logging all these tickets, all this activity, but in terms of being able to report on it, um, to be able to make actionable decisions upon that data and have information to, to actually you know, base those decisions on is often very difficult. It's hard to get at. Um, there are a lot of tools that simply don't provide, they'll tell you how many tickets are open, how many tickets are closed, um, but that's not necessarily all of the picture. So one of the unique features of Sherwell that I like to focus on is the dashboard capability. Um, you should be in front of you seeing the global IT dashboard for Sherwell 8, which highlights for me you know, as a global IT manager, you know, all of the workload, all of the work effort that's being funneled into the service desk. What are we working on? What are we spending our time on? How much time is being spent and where? All of those details. A lot of this um, is very, very difficult to get from other solutions, meaning that you know, something like first call resolution percentage, for example, and you see is a, a widget that's here on my dashboard. Um, that's quite often something when you talk to other vendors that they'll tell you that you can get there, but it involves creating the calculations, you know, computing actually what first call, you know, closure rate means. Um, there's a lot of work and sometimes advanced mathematics that, that's involved in getting to this point. With Sharewell, they provide some nice widgets that you can simply drag and drop onto a global dashboard like this to immediately start getting meaningful information without having to spend days or weeks creating the queries or you know creating the background um, structure that's necessary to present that information or to calculate that information. Um, so in deference to a lot of the other tools that you're going to see on the market, um, one of the unique things about Sherwell is they provide out of the box um, a huge library of data and information in the form of these widgets that you can simply use to drag and drop onto a dashboard like you see before you so that you can understand exactly what's going on with your service desk, exactly what's happening with your staff, exactly what's happening with your customers, and be able to get to that easily without having to spend days and weeks configuring, you know, complex calculations or you know trying to figure out percentages. Um, it's a very drag and drop um, uh, environment. So you see, I can have it from a global perspective. I might also be logged in as an individual contributor, somebody that's simply a part of a team, like help desk support or desktop support or incident management so that not only can you have that global view of the environment, but you can also have the individual view and what's assigned to me, what's assigned to my group, what's assigned to my team, how many incidents are there, how many problems are there, how many changes are there, you know, what, what's happening within the system so that users can be directed and easily um, uh, led to 
the information that they're looking for. Now, let's take, for example, the, the global IT dashboard. Let's talk about it for a minute. I, I mentioned the fact that it's the, the Chairwell system is widget based. So um, if there's something you want different, for example, on this dashboard, um, then what's then what's displayed now. If I want to add a new feature, I want to add a new widget, for example. I can go to the dashboard editor and go to edit, and it's going to bring up um, not only a visualization of the dashboard itself, like what I'm actually seeing on the desktop, but a, a detailed listing of the widgets or the different views that I can add to that dashboard that may help me in my job, whether it be incidents by configuration item, you know, impacted events, whatever the case may be, so that I can actually select these objects, select these widgets, and add them to my desktop very easily so that I have the executive view that I need. It shows me everything that I want, everything that's assigned to my teams, I can see workloads, I can see you know high impacting events, I can define for myself what I'd like to see through simple uh, measure of you know uh, widgets and then adding those widgets. So you see I can drag and drop a widget actually onto the dashboard screen itself. You know, and place that, you know, give that graph, give that information some priority on the screen so that everybody sees it when they log in. So you don't have to have just one dashboard. You can have a global IT dashboard, but you could also have an individual dashboard that shows individual assignments, individual priorities, individual tasks, um, so that you can have not only the global view, that's necessary from an executive perspective, but also being able to see things from the individual view or individual perspective, so you can see what's assigned to specific users or specific groups. And it gives you that kind of configurability in a drag and drop format so that you don't have to have specialized skills. It doesn't take a you know Java coder or a Java scripter to be able to modify the interface Anybody can come in through the editor and be able to drag and drop a dashboard together that displays relevant information that you're looking for without having to, you know, assign this out to somebody with, that has specialized skills or a specialized uh, 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 skill set, right? Now, let's take a look at a couple of items. So let's drill in perhaps to the open incidents, for example. I can click on any widget in the dashboard, and you'll notice it allows me to drill down into it. So if I want to look at the open incidents within the dashboard to allow me to see the details, you know, how many incidents do we have open, how many are overdue, how many are pending, mean time to repair, mean time to, to uh, respond, etc. Um, just by drilling down into those open incidents. So you have drill down capability even beyond, you know, if I want to drill down beyond here, then I take it one more level, right? So I've gone from the high level executive view to here's all the incidents we have coming into the organization to here's how they're basically subdivided into the different types or categories of incidents that are being uh, submitted all the way to the individual incidents themselves, along with the details and all of the information associated with that incident. And I can click on what I like to call the uh, the, the business card um, uh, view that allows me to open up the information related to that particular incident. So now I can see all of the information related to the person making the request, who owns the request, is there a service level agreement that governs this request? How fast are we supposed to respond? How fast are we supposed to resolve this particular issue for this particular user? As well as, of course, all of the unique and specific details that we've captured from 
the user, whether it be via phone, via email, or via the customer self-service portal, you know, where they're going in and actually submitting these requests for themselves. Um, that way you have all the information at your fingertips. Um, I can see everything from user information and drill down into that if I need to if I need to see you know further details or further information, um, past emails, um, other information related to that user. I can actually drill down and I request that information and view that here. If I want, I can simply view all of you know the major details for the request just by clicking on um, the associated form at the top and then scrolling through the appropriate fields. Now, in many cases, um, you've got common uh, events, common tasks that are occurring with users on a regular basis. Um, so you have, you know, typical users that are going to call in information randomly, report problems. You may also have issues that recur on a regular basis, right? So um, within ShareWell, one thing it allows you to do is from your home page, if you've got, you know, the, the, the common issues that typically occur, IT problems, my computer's not working, um, I can't get to the internet, um, email's not coming through, whatever the case may be, um, then you can actually have uh, set up what's called, and we'll do start right back here at home, where it should be. From here, then if I need to, let's say I need to create a new incident or a new problem related to a user. You see right up here at the top, there's a button that's illuminated and it allows me to generate you know, a new request or a new incident or submit a new problem related to a customer, a new knowledge article, whatever the case may be, um, depending upon your configuration and your profiles. Um, so the users can actually go in and create new records within the system. In this case, maybe I say uh, I am having email problems. I'm going to type it, right? And I can go through and say, you know, email on my laptop, whatever the case may be. And I can start to go through and you'll see the form prompts me for things like classification, description, so that you can funnel these tickets um, and push these tickets to the right individuals. So that not everything is landing necessarily at the desktop support desk, but perhaps maybe, you know, enterprise support or email support or whatever the case may be. Not just depending upon, and you'll notice with the priority selection, um, it helps the user along the way. A lot of times this is a, a problematic part of the process and that customers always want to say that everything's high priority. Everything's, you know, for me, it's always a priority one. Um, I want it done as quickly as possible. Um, by asking the customer or forcing the customer or the user to understand or identify whether it's affecting them individually or them or everybody in their department, everybody in their company, then we can automatically assign a priority level to that, re that issue or that request without asking the user to prioritize it for themselves, which in most cases would always end up in, right, a high priority. They're always going to say it's priority one. And they'll probably even click that major incident button and say, it's major, you need to fix it right now, even though it only impacts or affects them as an individual user. Um, so we can actually use that priority matrix not just to, and I would suggest in most cases that you get rid of the, you even get rid of this major incident box completely and just allow the user to determine, you know, is it something that affects them alone 
Is it something that affects more than them? Is it something that affects their department, their division, their company, you know, everybody in the, in the organization? So that you can use those prompts and queries to determine what the priority of the request is rather than relying on the user to say it's a high priority or it's a low priority because they themselves might not even know or understand the depth of the issue. Um, it may be much bigger than just themselves, but of course, they're just going to be reporting it from their perspective. So by having an understanding of, you know, is this just affecting you? Is it affecting others around you? Is it affecting your department? Is it affecting your ability to work? Um, simple questions like that can be built out and used to determine priority so that you can accurately prioritize issues coming in to share well without having to rely on simply looking at what's a one, two, three, four, or five on the priority list, um, which of course, like I said, if, if you allow the users to select from that list, everything's gonna come in as a priority one and you're gonna have a problem in that everything is gonna appear as a high priority. You have a couple questions here, Kyle. One of them directly relates to this. Um, okay. Larry wants to know, what if a site doesn't want to prioritize on the number of users, but instead on things like specific applications or products? Uh, an odd icon on a 100 user desk is a not high priority. 10 customers unable to buy product is certainly a higher priority. That's question number one. Okay, yeah, all right. So let me, let me tackle that one first. Um, number one, absolutely. All right, so there is a, a CMDB that is a part of ShareWell, an asset database. Part of the reason for having that and populating that CMDB is being able to relate the incidents and problems and changes that you're logging within ShareWell to specific items, right? To specific pieces of hardware or software or whatever the case may be. So that you can you build a history for those devices, and you also build, um, uh, 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 I want to say, you know, uh, well, let's just leave it history, right? So you can see what's happened to that device over time. Now, in addition to that, what you could do is, you know, when those assets are discovered or when they come into the CMDB, you know, the the information in terms of urgency, in terms of priority, in terms of impact could be defined based on that asset. So maybe you're not relying on the user to tell you how important a particular issue is. Maybe a user is simply calling in and tell you they have an email problem, but you're able from that report to determine that if you have an email problem with that user, that it affects also 50 other users also using the same email system or 500 um, and that this is a much bigger issue. So that's something you can automate through ShareWell so that you know if you start to receive numerous calls on the same you know subject over and over that you can create a master ticket and have sub tickets you know or what I call I like to call them the me too tickets it's uh it's the you know people log in and say yep me too me too me too me too that's what you want you want to be able to publish the information out through a portal so they can say hey we've got an email issue going on uh, we know it affects you know the eastern seaboard or the western seaboard and those users can then log in and see that that information broadcasted so they can say yep me too me too me too. And now you see exactly how many people were impacted by a particular event, whether it's five or 500, um, because you've made it easy. Because if you make it difficult, if you make that hard, you know, even if you publish the information, you broadcast it as a big banner scrolling across the top and they see it and all that stuff, if you don't give them an easy way to say me too, then you're going to lose that ticket. They're never gonna. They're never gonna report it. They're gonna see that. Oh, they're already working on it. Fine, whatever. I'll log off and I'll go on about my business. And I won't even let them know that it actually impacts me. And that's a that's a huge problem in terms of being able to understand what's going on 
within the environment, being able to understand what's going on within the service desk. But if you make it easy, if you make it simple for them to say me too and attach themselves to that issue, then you give them an easy way to simply click a button and say, you know, let me know when this is updated, let me know when this is resolved, let me know when this is ultimately uh, completed or closed without me having to go through and describe it and prioritize it and categorize it and do all of the other, you know, typical field information that I'd have to put in. And the other question um, it, they asked, you started to show how to deal with recurring incidents or service requests. Uh, are there shortcuts rather than filling out all the fields with the same info every time? Yeah, absolutely. So you can utilize what's referred to as, you know, templates, common tasks, for example, so that if I have you know, one of a series of uh, of common issues, whether it be a password reset, um, maybe it's you see I've, I actually drag and drop my uh, my widget here on top, so I'm kind of overriding a couple of things. But um, I can actually see based on the workload. Well, let me go back to global IT and pull up a particular request, for example. And you can see I'm just, I'm drilling down, what I'm doing is I'm drilling down from the dashboards to the individual records and to the individual information that's used to create them. Now, one of the things you could do is when you go to, you know, when I go to new, and I say I wanna create a new incident, for example, as the case was just mentioned, and I'm going to hide all this, then you'll see what's going to come up. I'm going to hide this. It should. No, oh, no, oh, and here it is. Sorry, <laughs> it's right in front of me. Um, it allows me to pick from a list of predefined templates or, you know, what I call the kind of the quick tickets, right? The, the things you want to be able to create quickly and easily all the time. Users call about them, you know, 50 times a day. All you need to do is identify who's calling, right? Um, and then provide, yeah, I can provide, well, I could provide a short description or I can actually just classify it into one of the templates. So I can say it's an enterprise app issue um, related to Microsoft Office, and I need to submit the incident. And that, that in and of itself, right, um, just creating that will kick off a, a template perhaps that goes to the desktop support team or goes to, uh, and you can see, I mean, I'll just do test description. So you guys don't have to wait for me to do this. And I can actually create a ticket from a template. You know, it could be something that's a new hire request, um, offboarding request, onboarding request, system access request. Um, any of those different types of requests can be templated so that the user can submit them easily, not only, well, not only an agent through this interface, but also through the end user portal so that they can actually, you know, identify for themselves that they have, you know, an email problem or an internet issue or a desktop application issue that needs to be assigned and followed up on. You can create templates that are accessible via both staff and end user and have those separated, right? So there may be templates um, that are available to staff users, people you know, on IT that take calls and field emails all day, they may have a list or a library of, of, of templates that's, you know, 
20, 30, 40, 50 large. Um, the end users, the customers that are logging in through self-service, that are calling in and actually contacting the service desk via other means, they may only have access to four or five of those requests via self-service. It's entirely up to you in terms of how much do you want to present to the end user or the customer and how much do you want to remain uh, back of house or you know uh, inside the house, so to speak. Um, so you're relying on the on the phone calls and the emails. That's entirely up to you. Now, Rich, before I go on, was there any other questions in the chat box before we continue? Nope, that took care of it for now, sir. Okay. And please, if 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 uh, somebody has asked a question, if that didn't answer your question, you know, feel free to to jump in and say that didn't answer my question. You know, I need more, um, and I'll be happy to show you. So, what I what I really like to focus on um, in these demonstrations is because I'll I'll be honest with you. Um, everybody can create a ticket. Everybody can create a change request. Anybody can create a problem. They can all create knowledge articles. They can all send emails. Um, everybody can do all that stuff. Everybody you're going to look at is going to say, "Hey, we can we can do all that." That's that's just the way the the marketplace is today. The difference is is in how is the information presented. Is it usable? Is it meaningful? Is it informational? Is it something we can actually work with versus just noise? Because a lot of the times, I think what happens with a lot of the tools, whether it be you know, footprints, whether it be ShareWell, whether it be Service Desk Express, you name it, on and on and on, um, is how they present the information. Do they make it available in such a way so that you can actually do something with it rather than, you know, just being presented with a lot of information. So that's one of the reasons I like this this dashboard view. And and you could you you saw how earlier I could go in and add the the uh, the widget for the uh, incident breakdown at the top, which is kind of breaking up my whole. Mojo right now in terms of my global IT dashboard, but that just shows you how simple it is to go in and make a modification, right? Anybody can go in a minute and say, hey, you know what? I want this widget on my desktop. I want this information as a part of my reporting or my um, global IT desktop that I want to view. So that's how simple it is. <laughs> Not only to go in and make it right, but to go in and screw things up, right? To do things like I did, where somebody just goes in and says, hey, I like this, perfect, right there. And now everybody sees it right there in the middle of the desktop. Um, that just points out the fact that it is it is ultimately easy with ShareWell to be able to go and configure the tool the way you want it without having to have coding experience. You know, I didn't, I didn't need to have any experience in terms of JavaScripting, or uh, HTML, or you name, you know, Ruby on Rails, you name it, um, to be able to do that. I can go in and drag and drop from that selection of widgets and that library of widgets and build up a dashboard that I need that shows me what I want and what the way I want to see it, but without having to spend hours or days or weeks with a consultant trying to configure it. And that, in a lot of cases, is where you spend the majority of your time. You know, you implement a tool, and then you spend the next two weeks trying to get it to work the way that you want it to, right? Um, getting it to fit within the environment, show you the data that you want, show you, you know, your incidents and your requests the way that you want to see them. Um, with ShareWell, it makes it simple for anybody to be able to go in and minutes and start dragging and dropping together their own dashboard so that you can have that global IT view. You can have your personal view. You can have a departmental view. You can have, you know, an application view. You can go in and create different dashboards that will allow you to filter and see the information, you know, out of the out of the service desk database that you're interested in, 
without having to have you know developmental level experience by just being able to simply drag and drop widgets onto a dashboard rather than having to write the queries yourselves or having to develop you know the code yourselves um, having all those things available so that whether I'm an IT executive or whether I'm an individual working on the service desk and just responding to, you know, requests coming in, you know, I can just come in here and click on, you know, my 16 requests assigned to me, and here they are, and I can start drilling down into each one of these individually and responding, you know, adding actions, adding activity, whatever the case may be. Um, without having to have any kind of knowledge or experience, you know, in terms of programming or coding. So a lot of different tools, you know, that will offer the same kind of capabilities, but what it requires is there's a, a much higher bar, a much, uh, um, uh, you know, higher level that you have to achieve in terms of resource requirements as well as resource knowledge. Um, to be able to administer the tool. So you want something you can drag and drop, not something that you have to call in a consultant every time you want to add a field or remove a field or add a particular piece of workflow, for example. So one of the great things about Cherwell is be it, you know, we call it widget-based or widget kind of driven, um, it's drag and drop. It allows you as a customer to kind of build things up with your mouse and keyboard, whether it be a form for a service request, whether it be a form for a new incident, whether it be a form for um, you know, a new hire, whatever the case may be, being able to build that and construct that with drag and drop tools rather than having to have somebody that has the knowledge and skill set to be able to sit down and, and code it all out and do it in in you know minutes and hours versus days and weeks, which is the typical with you know a lot of uh, solutions. Um, Rich, I'll stop there for a quick second. Do we have any questions on the chat that I need to address? I do not have any further questions. And folks, if you do have a question, please feel free to reach out to us now. Get your question answered live uh, while we have Kyle with us today. He's taking time out of his busy day for us. Um, we've got a few more moments left in this webinar, so let's see if we can't get another question or two in there. Uh, Kyle, was there anything else in particular you wanted to show us with Sharewell? Um, you know what? Let me, as I think about it, you know, there's all kinds of things I'd love to show. Uh, I'll always, if you give me time to talk, I'll always keep talking. So fair enough. <laughs> I'll I'll keep talking for a few more minutes until somebody says enough, or I start seeing people drop off the WebEx or go to meeting. Um, um, having used. Um, a large majority of service desk tools on the market today. Uh, I want to address one specific point that I think customers need to understand about Sherwell. Um, when you look at other tools, um, don't care what it is. Um, I can name a bunch of them. You know, um, Service Desk Express, Remedy Force, Footprints, um, Land Desk. You know, all of them out. There is a, a huge difficulty in the majority of those tools in getting some basic information that customers want, always. Things like first call resolution percentage. Now, anytime you see, like, you know, this, uh, um, anytime you see a percentage, uh, period, in any tool, um, ask that customer how they, or ask that uh, vendor how they arrived or how they you know acquired that particular percentage because for most pardon me this information is almost impossible to retrieve for most service desk systems if you want to see you know first call resolution percentage if you want to see mean time to repair if you want to see mean time to fail you know any any kind of anything that involves a calculation you have to create that equation. 
you have to come up with the mathematical equation that creates that percentage. Um, you, you can go down list for list for BMC to you know front range, you name it. They'll say, yeah, we can do it. Just give us just give us the equation, and the equation is the hard part. That's the difficult part. Um, being able to determine what's open, you know, what percentage is open, what percentage is closed, what's it based on? Is it just status? Are we looking at time? Are we looking at dates? I mean, there's a whole, you know, a whole library of factors that, that can factor into that. With Sherwell, what I love is because they've got these easy to use widgets, you can drop things like first call resolution percentage and you know, uh, open VIP tickets and open change requests and all of these little individual widgets that you see on this page here that I didn't have to go through and create. I didn't have to develop the, the formulas behind them, the criteria behind them. Um, there's a lot of other tools that will say, hey, we can give you the same data. Just tell us what you're looking for, right? Just give us the query and we can query it out which is great, but you've got to spend the time doing that. Um, what I love about Sherwell is it's got such a large library of out-of-the-box widgets for things like first call resolution percentage, um, you know, SLA percentages, things like that, mean time to repair. Things like if you look at other products in the market space, they'll all tell you they can, they can provide that, but they want you to provide the calculation, they want you pro to provide the equation to actually drive that value. Um, with Sherwell, they give it to you as a widget, you can just drop on your desktop and say, show me first call resolution percentage, or show me, you know, this percentage of tickets that are open, um, without having to understand all the mathematics behind it. Um, so there are a lot of tools that provide some, you know, fancy desktops, dashboards, graphics, and things like that. What we really need to ask and look at is, you know, underneath that, um, are they really just showing you, you know, a lot of them just open tickets, show me open tickets, show me closed tickets, show me, you know, tickets assigned to this group or that group. That's all very basic. When you get into mean time to repair, when you get into uh, first call resolution percentage, when you get into calculating information based on the service does, most other tools will fall short very quickly. And when I say fall short, I don't mean that they're not they're not capable of providing the information. It's just that you have to provide the equations and the calculations to get that information. With Sherwell, they provide it out of the box with a nice little library of widgets so that you can see first call resolution percentage just by dragging and dropping it on your dashboard versus having to spend two or three hours trying to figure out how you calculate what a first call resolution really means. What does that, you know, what does that mean? When is it open? When is it closed? All the details. Um, that way you can get to, you can get to meaningful information much faster um, with Sharewell than you can with a lot of the other tools. They'll tell you that, you know, we, you know, we, can, we can provide all this same information, but when you dig a little deeper and when you look a little deeper, it's requiring you to come up with the equations and the calculations to come up with all that information. It's not as simple as just dragging and dropping a widget onto the Sharewell dashboard. So huge difference. We do have another. Go ahead. We have one more question on calculations. It says, are the calculations used for each metric widget documented? If I understand the if I understand the que the question correctly, yes. So um, each widget um, first call resolution percentage for incidents, for example, or or uh, you know some uh, mean time to repair for problems. Yes, it is object specific. So the widgets that are in the library that, that you have to drag and drop out onto your you know your uh, your platform or your palette. Um, they are in other words, all those queries have already been coded. Now, if you want to create your own, you can create your own widgets. You're not limited to the library of widgets that 
that Turbo provides. Those are just the out of the box. So if you wanted to create your own widget that has a certain query that pulls up certain information and, and displays it in a certain way, that is completely within your purview. All I've been talking about is what is out of the box that you can simply drag and drop in a couple of seconds onto your dashboard. Now, if you want to go and start creating new queries and creating new widgets and adding those to dashboards, um, the sky's the limit. There's, there's, no, there's no limitation to what you can display or what kind of information you can query up um, via those widgets. Once you create them, then you can put them, those in the library just like the out-of-the-box widgets and allow users to drag and drop those onto their dashboard. So if there's something that particular piece of information or particular breakdown they want to see, they can easily go to that library that you've you know, uh, uh, created um, and drag and drop you know, something onto their dashboard that maybe they want to see for the next you know, couple months um, and have it available to them without having to create it themselves. So um, you're not limited to just the widgets that Sharewell provides. That's just the out of the box. That's, that's your starting point. And then on top of that, you can create your own so that you can have you know, complete you know, customization over this interface. And I think that is the, all of our time for today, Kyle. I appreciate you taking time out of your day uh, to present ShareWell to our audience. And for those of you that participated uh, today, we thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to let everybody get back to their day. And until our next webinar, have a great afternoon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.